Hey everybody, today we are going through some problems that involve the fundamentals of cost, volume, profit analysis, and we're going to be doing it in Microsoft Excel. Before we get started, it's important to note that the inputs, the key information that goes into the questions, which will lead into the answers, those are going to be outlined in orange here, and the answers themselves are going to be outlined in blue. It's always important to remember that the question is always asking you for something specific, and you might have intermediate calculations that you need to solve for, so always make sure you know what the question is asking for and make it clear what your answer is. So let's get started by reading the question. The Black Mesa Company reports the following for its most recent income statement. Total sales of $150,000 were based off of 7,500 units, less variable costs of $78,750 for those same units, gives us a contribution margin of $71,250. The company also had fixed expenses of $45,600, leaving it with a total net income of $25,650. So, question number one here, what is the sales price per unit? Well, the sales price per unit is the total sales revenue divided by the unit sold. It's the price per unit. So in this case, we're going to take the revenue of $150,000, we're going to take the units of $7,500, and get the sales price per unit. This cell divided by this other cell. And it's going to be $20. So that's question number one. Question number two, what are the variable costs per unit? Well, it's going to follow the same pattern as question number one here. We have to take the total variable cost, and I'm going to make this a negative reference here, of $78,750. And the total unit sold, same as the above problem, is 7,500 units. And once again, this cell divided by this other cell, we're going to get $10.50. Question number three, a great example of how one question might need other questions to get the answer, what is the contribution margin per unit? Well, the contribution margin per unit is the sales price per unit minus all the variable costs to make that unit. In this case, we solve for both of those up here, so let's just put them in. The sales price per unit is $20. The variable cost per unit is $10.50, and the difference between the two is nine dollars and fifty cents. All right, question number four. If sales units are doubled, what are total variable costs? Well, let's start by finding out what the new sales units would be. In this case, it's going to be the 7,500 being the original multiplied by two, because we're doubling it. That will get us a total of 15,000 new units. And we're asked to find the total variable costs if we have these new units. So, we have to multiply this by the variable cost per unit, which we solve for in question number two. I'm going to take it from this tab right here, and we have $10.50. Multiply these two together, and we get $157,500. Question number five. If sales units are doubled, what are the total fixed costs? This is an important question because it's a trick question. Fixed costs do not scale with the number of units sold. So in this case, we have original fixed cost of $45,600, and the new fixed cost is going to be the same number. Now, question number six. If A, more units are sold, profits will increase by how much? A, this item right here, it's a little tick mark, so I can put in the 45 whenever I, I can make it whatever number I want very easily. So in this case, the increase here is going to be 45. And to find out the increase in the profits, we want to include both the sales price and the variable cost. And that is the contribution margin for a unit in this case, right? So we are going to take this 45 and multiply it by the contribution margin per unit, which we solve for. It's going to be 950 right here. And the increase is going to be the product of these two numbers, $427.50. All right, let's move on to number seven. How many units are required to break even? Well, the break even formula for units is going to be total fixed costs divided by the contribution margin per unit. So let's take those total fixed costs from the problem, $45,600 and divide it by the contribution margin per unit, which we solve for in question number three. $9.50. So if we take 45.6 divided by 9.5, we 
we get 4,800 units flat. It's very important to remember that if this was anything other than a whole number, you should round it up to make sure that the number of units actually makes sense. You cannot sh sell half of units, half of whatever, right? You have to sell a whole unit for these analysis. So you need to make sure that this is a whole number and that the best way to do that is to round up. Question number eight. How many units are required to earn a profit of B? B in this case being $52,250. So to do this, it's the same formula as above, but we got to add in some cost burden to get to that desired target income. So we're going to take our total fixed costs. We have to cover those. We also have to cover the 52,250. And if we put these together, we need to cover a total of $97,850. Then we do the same as above. We're just going to divide that by the contribution margin per unit. to get 10,300 units. So there you go. These are some fundamental questions that you need to understand how to do if you're looking to do cost, volume, profit, or CVP analysis. It's important to remember that not all questions are going to look like this one. Some might give you the cost per unit. Some might make you solve for the total amounts. There's still some other things that you might have to solve for, like break-even revenues, which is just going to be the break-even units times the revenue number, or a number of other questions. But it's important to understand how you get these eight first, and if you can get these eight, everything else will come naturally. So good luck.